Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we take a break from Gran Turismo and look at another of my favourite series of games from my youth, Tony Hawk's. Specifically Tony Hawk's Underground, a game that I feel doesn't really need much of an introduction. So let's skip that and dive straight in. Here are 50 things you might not know or at least remember from Tony Hawk's Underground. We'll kick things off in the create a park mode. When you create a custom skate park, you can also create a custom goal for your park. When you create a goal, you can opt to play that goal in a vehicle rather than on your board or on foot. Doing this on a created park gives you a car that you can't drive on any other level. It's a made up car, but it's likely based on a 1977 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, according to the internet game car database at least. It appears on other levels, as we'll see later, but not as a drivable vehicle. Next we head to Vancouver. Underneath the hotel at the centre of the level is a hockey rink. Very Canadian. There's a puck located in the centre spot which you can hit when you're on your board, or when walking. If you score at either end, the word GOAL will show up on the screen and you'll hear the sound of a buzzer. Depending on which end you score at, the word GOAL will either be blue or red. Heading to New Jersey, there's a house on this road here that has duck ornaments on the front porch. If you run or skate into them, you'll hear the noise of a duck quacking. Next up is an Easter egg in Manhattan. It's this sign in this small park area here. If you get close to it, you'll see that it says, No Kurt. This is likely an inside joke from the Neversoft developers, poking fun at one of their colleagues. I don't believe the identity of Kurt has ever been confirmed. However, there is a developer named Kurt Gutierrez listed in the credits in the instruction manual. So he's the most likely candidate at least. Speaking of Neversoft developers, there is a returning easter egg on Tony Hawk's Underground within the Creator Skater mode. You can enter certain codes as your created skater's name to load pre-made characters of the Neversoft developers and some other possibly random ones too. Are you guys ready? There are quite a few. You can use the timestamps in the video description if you'd like to skip past some of this bit. We have the Dock, which is Neversoft developer Adam Lippman. Alan Flores, Neversoft developer. Alex Garcia, Activision Production Coordinator. Andy Marchal, Neversoft developer. Bailey, which is John Bailey, Neversoft developer. Big Tex, someone whose identity is not confirmed. Fat Ass, which is Brad Bulkley, Neversoft developer. Akira 2S, which is Carlo Surla. Neversoft developer. R, which is Captain Cody, real name Cody Pearson, also a Neversoft developer. Chawa Steel, Neversoft developer. Chris P, which is Chris Peacock, Neversoft developer. Chris Rausch, Neversoft developer. Johnny O, Neversoft developer, whose in-game name is Chum. Dan Nelson, Neversoft developer. Daddy Mac, which is Dana McKenzie, Neversoft developer.
DDT, which is Darren Thorne, Neversoft developer. Top Bloke, which is Dave Cowling, Neversoft developer. Dave Stoll, Vice President of the North American Activism Studio. Crom, which is Eric Grosser, Neversoft developer. Yogurt, which is Gary Jez Danun, Neversoft developer. Glycerin, whose identity is not confirmed. Greeny, which is likely to be Jason Greenberg, Neversoft developer, although this is unconfirmed. GR Jost, which is Garrett Jost, Neversoft developer. Henry G, Neversoft developer. Geiger, which is Jake Geiger, Neversoft developer. Jason Uyeda, Neversoft developer. NS Jeff, which is Jeff Morgan, Neversoft developer. Jeremy Anderson, Neversoft developer. Joel Jewett, Neversoft developer. And one of the founders of Neversoft themselves. Frogham, which is Kendall, aka Kendall Harrison, Neversoft developer. Guilt Ladle, which is Kevin Mulhall, Neversoft developer. Marcos XK8R, which is likely to be Mark L. Scott, Neversoft developer. Woodchuck, which is Michelle Deo, Neversoft tester. Mike Ward, Activision Executive Producer. More Uber Than Ed, which is Mikey Ortai, Neversoft Tester. Noli, which is Nolan Nelson, Neversoft Developer. Pooper, which is Paul Robinson, Neversoft Developer. Buffoon, which is Pete Day, Neversoft Developer. Dead End Road, which is Ralph D'Amato, Neversoft Developer. Emyak, which is Rock, aka Rock Gropper, Neversoft Developer. Leet, which is Rulon Raymond, Neversoft Developer. Sick, which is believed to be Kurt Gutierrez, remember? From the Kurt sign earlier in the video, however this is unconfirmed. Skill Zombie, which is Aaron Skillman, Neversoft developer. Stacy D, which is Stacy Drellishak, Activision producer. Tao Jeng, Neversoft developer. Hammer, which is Ted Barber, Neversoft developer. The Kraken, which is reportedly Steve Gannon, Neversoft developer, although this is unconfirmed. The Swink, which is Steve Swink, Neversoft developer. Tsunami, which is Todd Sue, Neversoft developer. Todd Wahoske, Neversoft developer. Leads Leads Leads, which is Wardy, aka Chris Ward, Neversoft developer. Y2KJ, which is reportedly Jesse Shannon, Neversoft tester, although this is unconfirmed. And Zig, which is Zach Drake, Neversoft developer. Okay, now we head back to Manhattan to check out this piece of graffiti here. 
It's actually a Leeds United badge, the crest of a football club from back in England. But what's it doing here? Well, it likely relates to at least one of the game's developers. As we've just seen, Mark L. Scott originates from Leeds UK, so it could well be his favourite football team. And then we have Chris Ward, whose code is Leeds 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 to get him as a pre-made skater. Despite him actually not being from Leeds or the UK in general, so it could relate to one of these devs, if not both. On Tampa, if you go behind the back of the strip club shaped like a flying saucer, yes, you heard that right, there is a cop looking at the rear end of a goat. This is a running gag that began on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 if I remember right, and would go on to feature in future games in the series as well. Okay, so here's a cool glitch that you might want to try out yourselves. Go to this spot in Vancouver and turn on the moon gravity cheat. Then if you jump against the wall over and over, due to moon gravity you'll actually be climbing up it. From there head across the glass roof and down the side onto this lower section of roof here. Then we just need to drop down onto the road. We have to drop down on the right side of this yellow line though, as the section of road to the left isn't solid. Now we just need to wait for a tall traffic car to come along, either a bus or a van. Get up on it and then hang down off the side. The vehicle will drive you all the way up to the bridge until it disappears, then respawns heading back down the other side of the road. You will be stuck here in the same pose for as long as you like, until you press X, or one of the directional buttons to jump down, at which point you'll fall into the sea. It's pretty fun. On Moscow, you can find a snowman in this courtyard area here. If you jump at it just right and hit its head and nothing else, you'll get the fatality gap and the snowman will spout blood from its neck. Obviously, this is a reference to Mortal Kombat. On New Jersey, you're able to drive this car here. In fact, most levels have a vehicle you can drive. You can take the car and drive out of bounds in this specific spot. Once you respawn, reverse immediately and you'll bypass that same spot where the game knows you're out of bounds. What's more, the road past this point isn't solid, as you're not supposed to be able to get here, so your car will get stuck in the floor. With a bit of fidgeting you can get it out and you can even drive into the water. Interestingly, in this out of bounds section of the level, although the road isn't solid, the path is, so you can drive a bit further if you stick to the path. Sticking in New Jersey, if you go to the train station and make sure you have the music off, you can hear the announcer say some interesting things over the tannoy. Some announcements are pretty normal, but then there are others that say something like, if you want faster trains, pay more taxes. A train is now departing on track one. Thank you for riding our rails. If you want faster service, pay more taxes. A train is now departing on track four. The train into the city will be delayed until further notice. The 420 train will now be departing. Back to Tampa and we take another trip to the strip club. If you go into the flying saucer bit on top of the building and then proceed to go through this door, you'll come out of the front of the building and you'll get the message, 4 hours and $400 later. Here's one that you might have seen before, but it's just too good not to include in the video. If you go to the basketball court on Manhattan, grab onto the top of this wall here and move along to this spot. Then drop down, and your character will still be in the same animation of holding onto the top of the ledge. What's even weirder is that if you press the button that would usually be used to skate faster, so X on the PS2 version here, your character's animations will be crazily sped up. On Slam City Jam, there's a DJ on the decks. This isn't just any DJ, it's DJ Cubert, a real life DJ who actually has a song in the game's soundtrack. Also, if you manage to find every single gap on the game, you will unlock all the pedestrian skaters. 
basically other characters from story mode and people wandering about on each level. DJ Cubert is one of these pedestrian skaters you can unlock. So you can play as him and even stand next to the other DJ Cubert on Slam City Jam. Here's another one that you might remember if you've played the game before. On Hawaii, there's an evil tiki. You can jump in it and, well, you can see for yourselves what happens. You can also get off your board and walk around if you want more time to explore this space, as usually you'll be skating downhill and you won't be able to stop easily. <laughs> And this leads us to the next thing on our list. Next to the evil Tiki is a funny sign. It reads, 2345 Insult Way. Mirrors cannot lie about how you look, and lucky for you, they can't laugh either. You're so ugly, I bet your mother fed you with a slingshot. Back to Moscow now. Located close to the snowman is a chimney. If you get up to it and jump in it, you'll get a related message and you'll respawn close by. One of the messages is, Hey Chad, I'm stuck. There's a Neversoft developer listed in the credits called Chad Findlay, so this could potentially be an inside joke. There's another that says, Ho Ho No, bit of a Christmas theme there. And a third which says, Tastes like burning which I believe is a Ralph Wiggum quote from The Simpsons. There's also one more quote, which we'll talk about later in the video. Sticking in Moscow, there's this big glass dome that you can smash through. If you stand in the centre with the music off, you can hear voices saying, blah blah blah, followed by some angry crowd noises. Apparently, this is the developers ridiculing the regular Soviet congresses of the Communist Party. <laughs> also on Moscow, if you go to this spot here, you can break through this rather unassuming looking window. Inside, there's a small room with a rail you can grind. If you get off your board and walk up to the upper level, you can see a portrait on the wall of a man giving the rock and roll horns hand sign. This is actually likely to be the famed former Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin. Hard to imagine him giving the devil horns in real life. School 2 returns from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 as a playable level. And now we can also take advantage of new gameplay features to get more from this classic level. If you go to create a goal and start creating a goal near the starting point of the level, you can go over to this corner here to take a look out of bounds. If you look closely, you can see several assets that are used within the level, such as the school bells, a box, a trash can, and even the hall pass, which I remember from Tony Hawk's 2. Returning to the main menu now, like on mini games, if you wait on the title screen for long enough, the game will play a demo. There are several of these, all pre recorded demo sessions on various levels of presumably the Neversoft devs racking up some awesome combos. There's one in particular on Manhattan which is pretty amazing in my opinion. Let's watch this awesome combo together now.
Tony Hawk's Underground contains three levels from previous games. One of these is the hangar from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. If you've played the original version of this level, you might remember that to unlock the hangar's outside secret area, you have to grind on the helicopter's rotor blades to get it to take off. It flies up and bursts through the roof. Have you ever wondered where the helicopter actually goes? Well, we can take advantage of some new gameplay features to see. Firstly, when you're in create a goal mode, everything on the level pauses while you're creating a goal. So you can get the helicopter to take off, then enter create a goal mode at several different points to get a better look at the helicopter after it's taken off. Also, if you do this before it actually goes through the roof, you can see two additional pieces of the level on top of the hangar roof, which fall down once the helicopter goes through it. Using this method, we can see the helicopter go up further than we usually could, but we still can't see it all the way. So, let's do one more thing. Once the helicopter has taken off and gone through the roof, start creating a goal, and place the start icon for player 1 at a point where the helicopter will pass through it once it takes off. Then save the goal and load up another level. Then reload the hangar level again. We need to do this to get the helicopter to reset back on the ground. Then get the helicopter to take off, then quickly start the goal you just made. If you've done it right, you'll land on the helicopter as it's flying upwards, meaning you can take a trip right up to the very top of the level where the helicopter will eventually disappear. Sticking with the hangar, once you've grinded the helicopter's rotor blades and opened up the outside area, you can go through here to access it. If you stop and take a look around, you can see what looks like the Northern Lights. The hangar is set in Mullet Falls, Montana, which is a fictional place, but obviously Montana is a place that does actually exist. However, it's not a place that you can see the Northern Lights from. So the reason why we can see the Northern Lights, or the Southern Lights maybe, from here is unknown. One of the pets in Russia is a KGB member. He's also unlockable as a pedestrian skater when you collect all gaps too, just like DJ Qbert. If you look closely at this character's model, you can see that he has a scar down one side of his face and he's blind in one eye. The inspiration for this look was likely the famous Bond villain, Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Something you'll already likely know is that the band KISS is on the game. They feature on the level Hotter Than Hell, which is actually the name of a KISS album. On the level, you can get KISS to appear and play a concert by lighting up all the KISS letters. You can unlock Gene Simmons as a playable character by completing story mode on normal difficulty. He has two special moves, Lick It Up, which is named after the one of the band's songs on the game's soundtrack, which sees Gene flick up his board and grab onto it with his tongue. His other special move is Fire Fire Fire, where he spits fire on his board and then stomps back and forth. Anyway, did you know that you can unlock the other three members of KISS as well? They are also included in the list of pedestrian skaters that you get for hitting all gaps in the game. The other three members are Paul Stanley, Ace Fraley and Peter Chris. If you've ever explored Creator Skater Mode, you might have noticed that there is a list of pre-made skaters you can choose from, which were created by the game's developers. There's one pre-made skater that looks like a punk, and she's named Sheena. This is likely a reference to the song by the Ramones, called Sheena is a Punk Rocker. Incidentally, the Ramones featured on the soundtrack for Tony Hawk's 3, I went on to feature on the soundtracks for Tony Hawk's Underground 2 and Tony Hawk's Project 8 as well. Sticking with the pre-made skaters list, there's one that you might recognise if you played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. It's Daisy. On Tony Hawk's 4, she was a hidden skater who was unlockable, and she was originally based on, and voiced by, Jenna Jamieson. Also, if you look around the room, which is actually the bedroom of your story mode character in New Jersey, you can see a poster of Daisy on the wall. 
there are a series of movies on the game that you can unlock, one for every playable skater, as well as some other bonus videos. Bam Margera's video features a song that isn't included on the in-game soundtrack. It's Sailor Man by The Real Mackenzies. Unfortunately, I can't play it here due to copyright, but if you have the game, you can check it out. Anyway, so rumour has it that when the Neversoft team asked Bam what song he would like for his movie, he requested Sailor Man by Turbo Negro. You see, Turbo Negro wrote and performed the original song, and the real Mackenzies covered it. However, when the Neversoft team were sourcing the song Bam requested, they accidentally grabbed the cover version by the real Mackenzies instead. So, according to rumours, the song included in Bam's movie ended up not being the one he actually requested. Maybe one day we'll have this confirmed. There's a really cool glitch you can do on this game with the set restart feature. If you jump into an out of bounds area, where the game only checks to see if you're out of bounds when you hit the ground, you can spam the set restart over and over again to bypass this check. If you set your restart position at just the right time, you can get out of bounds this way. If you've been successful, you can select go to restart, and you'll be in the out of bounds area. In this case, I'm able to walk on water. My character has turned into Jesus Christ. Give this a try on other levels and let me know in the comments if you've got any good spots to exploit this glitch. There's actually more than one method to get out of bounds on this game. Another way is by creating a goal and placing the one player start icon out of bounds. This can be tricky to do in certain spots, but if you play around with it long enough, you'll be able to break through the level boundaries. Here's an example of an out of bounds goal I made on Vancouver just for this video. It's also one that I showcased in my secret areas video, all the way back in 2009. Another new mode of gameplay in Tony Hawk's Underground is the Creator Trick mode. One cool thing you can do here, which you might not know, is that you can take a grind and actually turn it into a grab or flip trick. In this case, I've taken the faction grind and turned it into a move that you can perform in mid-air. Pretty cool. On several levels, there were funny signs and names dotted around. Here are some examples you might have missed. There are buses driving around Vancouver which have Slowpoke written on them. There is a shop in Hawaii which is called PIC, which stands for Pure Island Crap. Also in Manhattan, there is a sign for a construction company called Fill My Crack In, i.e. Fill My Crack In. Lastly, for this video at least, there is a cafe in Hawaii near the pools, which is called Hungalow Wieners. Do you remember the car that featured in the very first item in this video? Well, you might remember that I said it features in other levels, even though it's not drivable there. On Tampa, there is one of these cars, which is curiously rocking back and forwards. If you've ever picked up a certain type of pedestrian back on Grand Theft Auto 3, your car will make similar movements. I'll just leave this one to your imagination. Another method that's used to get out of bounds in this game is the moon gravity cheat. If you enable it, then jump at a wall over and over again, you'll end up climbing it. As we saw on Vancouver earlier. If you do it at this spot in Manhattan, you can get to an out of bounds area that's cool to explore. It has two yellow lines running down the centre of the road here, but weirdly they are actually a solid object and lift off the road surface itself when you get quite far down. You can even walk along them and jump off at the end. Let's return to the Out of Bounds area in Vancouver from earlier in this video. There's something else here which is worth mentioning. The floor here is very weird. When you walk on it, it's normal. However, when you try and skate on it, this happens. 
Interestingly, the white section acts normally, while all the rest of this area doesn't recognise you landing down on your board. This leads to some pretty insane combos. Did you know that there is an alternate ending to story mode in this game? What happens during your first playthrough is this. Jeez, man. I think we broke the piñata with that video. We can't even keep up with orders. Oh, how cute. Two little skaters and their ghetto shop. Heard your video went over pretty good. I guess kids dig that goofy soul skating crap. I tell you what. I'll buy you out for half a mil right now. I got my checkbook. I told you. It was never about the money. <laughs> right, right, I forgot. Mr. Pure, I should have fixed you back in Tampa. Tell it to your posse. We're through. I've got everything I need. Not this. Remember? Hawaii, building jump, helicopter. That was some sick footage. Too bad no one ever saw it. You backstabbing, mob flipping cockroach. Hey, what do you say? One last trip around the neighborhood. Winner takes the tape. I'm still better than you. You got lucky, you little punk. Slam City Jam and Tampa with nothing but lucky, little bitch. Get back here. You ain't nothing. I know I can kick your ass. After this cutscene, you follow Eric's line around New Jersey, and at the end, you get your footage back. If you play through story mode again, you'll get this cutscene instead, and you'll avoid the entire sequence of following Eric. Jeez, man. I think we broke the piñata with that video. We can't even keep up with orders. Oh, how cute. Two little skaters and their ghetto shop. Heard your video went over pretty good. I guess kids dig that goofy soul skating crap. I tell you what, I'll buy you out for half a mil right now. I got my checkbook. I told you, it was never about the money. <laughs> right, right, I forgot. Mr. Pure, I should have fixed you back in Tampa. Tell it to your posse. We're through. I've got everything I need. Not this. Remember, Hawaii, building jump, helicopter? That was some sick footage. Too bad no one ever saw it. You backstabbing, mob flipping cockroach! Hey! What do you say? One last trip around the neighborhood. Winner takes the tape. Next up is the character Thud, a bonus skater you unlock by completing story mode on sick difficulty. Where's this character from? Well, it appears during the startup sequence for the game, when Neversoft is introduced. He pops out of a sewer and eats Eric, the antagonist of the main storyline. This creature has two special moves, Swimmer, where he swims on his board in mid-air, and Scary Grind. This sees Thud adopt a classic horror pose while the screen goes black and white and grainy. Anyway. So the facts I wanted to share about this character is that he is based on a monster called Chud, which stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dweller. Chud features in the 1984 movie of the same name. One last interesting thing about Thud. If you go back to the main menu, you can see that it has changed. It now reads, it came from the underground in 3D. And the colours look like the early 3D cyan and crimson combinations too. There's a glitch on this game with lip tricks and grinds in the same combo. So what you need to do is perform a lip trick that you can jump out of. Then perform a grind, or sometimes it takes two grinds to get it to work. And you'll find that instead of your character performing a grind, they'll perform another lip trick instead, which creates some weird effects. There's also another cool glitch involving lip tricks and grinds. On story mode, perform a lip trick then go into the options menu and play a cutscene. You need to pick one that has two skips in it, like the Muska demo. So play it, then press X to skip the first half, and then X again to skip the second half of the cutscene. 
When you get back to the pause menu, unpause the game and your skater will be in the wrong pose. They won't be doing a lip trick anymore. They will be in the pose that they adopt when you're on your board, but stopped, not skating. However, this also works for grinds too. Let's check it out. And it also works with manuals. It even works with gravel flip tricks performed in midair. Back to the creator park mode and we're going to take another look at the pre-made skate parks on the game. There's one called Fontucky Speedway which is a few ramps and pools, but mainly an oval race course or highway. This is likely based on a real life location, the Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California, which is an oval track that hosts NASCAR as well as other series. Back then it was still called the California Speedway. The name Fontucky is a combination of the words Fontana and Kentucky. It's a nickname given to Fontana because of the frequent comparisons it gets to Kentucky. Also, there's another pre-made park called Montana, and is of course named after the state of the same name. It's a running joke in the series, and the level is literally just a tree and nothing else. It's a joke at Montana's expense, with the state apparently being flat and empty. But why Montana? Well, one of the founders of Neversoft is a man named Joel Jewett. And yes, you guessed it, Joel is a native of Montana. So this level is basically the developers poking fun at their boss. We've seen a glitch on Manhattan already on this video, but it's time to check out another one. If you turn on moon gravity and jump at this particular building here, sometimes you'll be teleported away from it. Sometimes nearby, sometimes slightly further away. I honestly have no idea why this happened, but it's certainly weird and something I recommend checking out yourselves. Two of the human race's favourite numbers are 69 and 420, and those two numbers appear in several places in Tony Hawk's Underground. If you take a look at the buggy on Hotter Than Hell, you can see it has the number 69 on it. And if you drive it a short way to these helicopters over here, you can see the number 420 on them. Nice. Okay, the next item on this list covers two little easter eggs, both of which are references to Homestar Runner. Homestar Runner is an animated webcomic which was probably at the height of its popularity back when Tony Hawk's Underground was released. It's still going nowadays, but it doesn't command nearly as much attention, partly due to the creators taking a hiatus between 2010 and 2014. The first reference to Homestar Runner can be found when you jump into the chimney on Moscow, the same one we discussed earlier in the video. One of the rarer quotes you get after you jump in it is Burninated. This is a reference to Trogdor the Dragon from Homestar Runner. Also in Vancouver, you can take a look at the limo's license plate. You can see that it reads limousine. I mean, obviously it's a limousine, but spelled like this. It's also a reference to the hair metal band of the same name, once again from Homestar Runner. On Vancouver, there's the Great Mount Hotel, and then the ice rink underneath like we saw earlier. There's actually a lift that goes between the two, which you can easily take. However, what if you tried using the lift while driving the leaf blower? 
Interestingly, it still makes the right sound effect and your location pops up on the screen, but you won't actually be transported from one place to the other. Also in the hotel, there's this member of staff in the foyer who just keeps running in circles. Within the Tony Hawk's community, I remember him being referred to as the Marathon Runner. In Tony Hawk's Underground, there are at least two names on vehicles that refer to people from Neversoft. The first can be found in Hawaii. On the tour bus that's on the level, you can see the name Flores Hawaii Tours. This relates to developer Alan Flores, someone we saw earlier in the video when we took a look at all the developers that could be accessed via the Creator Skater mode. Also, there is a van in Vancouver which says Joe J. Lewitt Moving Company on it. This is likely a reference once again to Neversoft boss Joel Jewett, although his name has been changed a little bit to maybe not make this reference so obvious. On New Jersey, if you go to the train station and go down near the train tracks themselves, you can find this machine here. On it is a sign that says, thanks for riding our rails. This could be a reference to the train lines themselves, but it also likely has a second meaning. Grinding, or riding if you like, rails is a big part of the game, just like any skateboard game. So this sign could also be from the game's developers to us, saying thanks for riding their rails, i.e. thanks for playing the game. Next up, back to creator skater mode. If you look closely behind your created skater, you can see some shelves with various things on them including a stereo. On the bottom shelf you can see what looks like a PS2 game. In fact, it's actually a copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, which was the previous game in the Tony Hawk series. Okay, back to Slam City Jam, and back to DJ Cubit's turntables. There's another little easter egg here. You'll need to have the music on for this to work. If you grind the decks, the music will either pause for a second, or it'll skip the current song and move on to the next one on the playlist. And okay, here we are, the last fact in the video. Number 50 out of 50, and it sees us returning to Manhattan. Near your starting location, there's a woman wearing black business attire. If you go near her on your skateboard, she'll push you over. As with other levels, there's a car you can drive on Manhattan. It's this old banger here near Phil McCracken's construction. If you drive into this same woman, the game will still attempt to react in the same way by getting her to push you off your non-existent skateboard. What happens is, your board will fly out of the car, and you can even drive into it and push it along. Also, the sound effect of her pushing you over will play over and over. Well guys, there you go. 50 things you might not know, or at least remember from Tony Hawk's Underground. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.